Welcome to this beginner level Audacity tutorial. By beginner, I mean you have little or no experience in Audacity. I will cover quite a few areas of voice recording and editing. The goal of this tutorial is to record and process the best possible voice you can get using Audacity. You can see the topics I am going to cover on the screen. All these processes follow a system, and if you understand that, good voice recording will be easy for you. You will be able to produce the quality audio you are looking for. Please note that no chapter will be given in the description. Because this video covers everything you must know as a beginner. Sometimes I get comments on basic audio editing stuff, but if they have just gone through my video once, they would know. You cannot learn anything well without putting in the time and effort needed. I hope you already have Audacity installed. Let's start with how to record the best voice using Audacity. Recording in Audacity is very simple. If you press the red record button, the recording will start. However, you have to ensure that you set all the options correctly before recording. Otherwise, your recording quality will be poor. You can see the options needed to configure for a good recording. It may seem a lot, but it is not. We will go through the list one by one. It is very important to get as much as good quality recording as possible. It makes audio editing easier, and the final audio quality depends on how good the recording is. If you are a beginner, always remember good recording means good final audio. Bad recording means bad final audio. It does not matter how much processing you do or how expensive audio software you use. Bad recording always gives bad final audio. The first thing we will see is how to select the microphone for recording. Go to the audio setup button and you can configure your recording setup from here. You will see all your connected microphones from the recording device. The currently selected microphone will have a tick mark beside it. You can see the tick mark beside the MacBook Pro microphone. If I record now, this MacBook Pro microphone will be used. If I want to select another microphone, I have to click on its name, and it will be selected for recording. I clicked on the Samson mic, and now it will be selected as the recording device. It is important to understand what name your microphone is showing. Different microphones will have a different name. For example, my Samson USB mic is showing its name as Samson C01U Pro mic. However, my Sennheiser XLR microphone does not show its name as Sennheiser. Instead, we can see Scarlett 2i2 USB. Scarlett 2i2 is my audio interface, and my Sennheiser microphone is connected to it. If I want to use my Sennheiser microphone for recording, I have to select Scarlett 2i2 USB. I will select Scarlett 2i2 USB by clicking on it. If I now check the recording device from the audio setup, we can see Scarlett has the tick mark beside it. Sometimes you may not see all your microphones in this list though it is connected to the computer. It happens when you attach the microphone while Audacity is open. To solve this, click on Reskin Audio Devices. You can also close Audacity and open it again to see the newly attached microphones. After selecting the microphone, you have to select the recording channel. There are two options for recording channels, mono and stereo. For voiceover, mono is fine. For music recording, you might want to select the stereo recording channel. With a stereo recording channel, you can add different effects on the left and right sides of the headphones. For voice recording, you will not need such effects, so select mono to keep things simple. Please note that you may see only mono as the recording channel on your Audacity. If you use a mixer for recording, you may see more than two channels. It does not matter how many channels you see here, the main point is to select mono for voice recording. Next we are going to see a bit about audio settings. We are most likely to use the default audio settings, but it is important to know something about this. Otherwise, you may waste your time on the wrong things in pursuit of a good voice recording. I want to tell you quickly about my Audacity courses. I have two Audacity courses, Audacity for Beginners and Advanced Audacity. I suggest you at least check the course curriculum. By checking the curriculum, you will know what things you need to learn about audio editing. You will find links in the description and pinned comment. Back to the recording setup we were doing. Audacity shows the same option in multiple places. You can configure from any of these places you find convenient. For example, you can see the recording device and recording channel here too. I came to these settings for the sample rate and sample format. The microphone captures audio as an analog signal and must be converted to digital data to store on a computer. Sample rate is the number of samples taken per second during the conversion. Theoretically, the more samples are taken, the more details of the audio are stored digitally. You can see two options, project sample rate and default sample rate. The project sample rate is for this project only, and the default sample rate works as the default value for any new project. You do not need to use a higher sample rate than 44.1 kHz. Still, you need to be aware of the sample rate. A lower sample rate, like 32 kHz or more down, 
may fail to capture all the good bits of your recording. So you should not choose a lower sample rate like 32 kHz. However, the opposite is not true. You will not notice any difference in audio quality with a higher sample rate, like 88 kHz or more. Instead, your file size will grow significantly and take up much disk space. You can get the best possible recording with 44.1 kHz or 48 kHz. All the fantastic MP3s you listen to are 44.1 kHz. 48 kHz is used as the sample rate of CD burning. You should choose the sample rate as 44.1 kHz unless you know a good reason for other values. I see no good reason to use any other sample rate than 44.1 kHz, so I will use it. Though 44.1 kHz is the default sample rate, I discuss this as many beginners wrongly think their bad recording is due to the sample rate. It is not the sample rate if you record audio in 44.1 kHz and still sound bad. It may be the microphone or the recording environment, or the way you are talking in the mic. The default sample format should be 32-bit float. Keep the default sample format to 32-bit float. You may not notice any difference with 24-bit or 16-bit recording. But 32-bit float recording has some advantages during the editing process. So choose 32-bit recording. Some people set 24-bit as the sample format, because some platforms ask for 24-bit encoding. Encoding and sample format are different things. We do not need to worry about those technical matters at this moment. You can always encode in the preferred 24-bit or 32-bit during export. There is no harm in recording in 32-bit float. If these talks look complicated, follow one simple rule. The sample rate is 44.1 kHz, and the sample format is 32-bit float. Most platforms accept these settings. Later when I show you the export process in detail, I will show you how to meet the requirements of any platform. During recording in Audacity, the sample rate should be 44.1 kHz, and the sample format should be 32-bit float. Period. Selecting a microphone from the audio setup button can lead to an issue where you forget to set the microphone. I suggest setting the microphone from the device toolbar, where you can always see which microphone is selected. You can find the device toolbar from View, Toolbars, and Device Toolbar. You can set which toolbar to show or hide from here. A new toolbar has been added, and you can always see which microphone is currently selected for recording. The device toolbar is one of the most useful toolbars in Audacity. But it is not shown by default, so remember to enable this toolbar from the menu. You can see the recording device and recording channel in the dropdowns. As I told you, you can do the same thing in several places. The last dropdown with the speaker icon is the playback device. It may or may not be important during recording. If you enable overdub or live monitoring, then the playback device is important during recording, otherwise you can ignore it. You will see the option named here other tracks during recording in the transport options. Previously it was named overdub. In multi-track recording, you can listen to other tracks while recording. I do not have any tick mark beside it, which means it is not enabled. There is another option of enable audible input monitoring. It means live monitoring. Live monitoring means you listen to the audio while recording. If you are using an older version of Audacity, it will be labeled as software playthrough. If I enable this option, I can listen through the playback device while recording. I do not usually use this option, but if you are interested in using such a feature, you know where it is. As a beginner, you may not be interested in such a feature, but in the future, you may look for live monitoring. Now you know where it is in case you need it. I will move to the next settings of the input level or gain staging. It is also called the recording level. A proper recording level is important for a clean audio. Audacity has two meters to monitor the audio level. The first one is the recording level monitoring meter, and the second one is the playback level monitoring meter. You can drag these meters to reposition and increase in length. It is vital to set the recording volume level properly. Post-processing your audio heavily depends on the audio level of your recording. I find it easy to read the level in a bigger meter. Click on the small microphone icon and enable silent monitoring. When you enable silent monitoring, you can see the current level in green. This way, you can set the proper input level before the recording. It helps to position your microphone and give you a hint of how loud you should talk. Your goal is to hit between minus 12 and minus 6 during the loudest peaks. Not every spoken word has to be in this range. Only the louder sounds should be in this range, ideally not exceeding minus 6. Other spoken words should cross minus 24 at least, and be around minus 18 to minus 10 most of the time. Please note you do not have to be very precise about these numbers. These are more of a guideline to achieve a good signal level that is not too hot. A hot signal means when you are hitting the red zone in the meter. 
If you record audio in the red zone, you run the risk of clipping and distortion of the voice. You will also have less headroom for post-processing. If your audio level never crosses minus 6 during recording, you will have a headroom of 6. That is a good enough headroom for post-processing. The less headroom you have, the more risk you have of voice distortion in post-processing. Alternatively, you should not aim for too much headroom. If the loudest peak never crosses minus 18, you may be recording too close to the noise floor. The terms like headroom or noise floor may seem technical, but bear with me. You will be used to these things as you progress in your learning. The main goal is to have a good enough audio signal that is easier to post-process. The recording meter also has a slider that can be used to control gain. You can drag this slider to adjust the recording level. However, this slider sometimes freezes when I screen record. It is freezing at this moment as I am screen recording let me show that from the playback meter slider, as both work similarly. You can adjust the slider and check if the meter is hitting the right place. When it hits the right place, you set the slider in that position. I usually keep the recording meter to 100%. Because even after it is 100%, I hit in the proper range. You may have to position the microphone differently if you fail to hit the correct range even after increasing the gain. You may have to come closer to the microphone, talk louder, or adjust your talking direction. You may have to increase the gain if you are not achieving such a level in the record meter. You may increase the gain through the volume knob of the microphone or audio interface. You may ask me why you have to hit the meter range of minus 12 to minus 6. Well, you can hit higher than that. But notice the maximum on this meter is zero. The closer to zero you record, the less headroom you will have in post-production. If you boost some signals in post-processing and it crosses zero, it would result in clipping or distorted sound. You can always boost your volume level after recording the audio. So keeping some headroom for post-processing is a smart thing to do. You can stop monitoring by clicking Disable Silent Monitoring. Everything is set for recording, I will press the record button now and let you hear the original recording. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software and I recommend to use Audacity as a uh, early software. I recommend using Audacity as the first software if you are in if you are new to audio editing and recording, I recommend using Audacity. Though Audacity may not be stable as other paid audio editing software, but it is a good software to start with. The recording is done, and what you see is a waveform in the timeline. The blue things are called waveform. In Audacity, we edit the waveform to get the desired result. I will get back to the details, but the first thing you need to do after recording is save the project. Saving a project is different from exporting an audio file. If you need to send this audio to somewhere, you will need an audio file. You can export it as MP3 or WAV or other audio formats. Later in this tutorial, I will discuss the details of the export process. For now, let's see how to save an Audacity project. Go to File, Save Project. You may see a warning message as this is not an audio file. You can only open this file in Audacity, not in any other audio playing apps. I disabled that message, so that is not shown in my Audacity. If you see that warning, it is a harmless message. Give your project a name and choose a location to save. You will be able to open this project at a later time and work from the last saving point. Remember, Audacity does not have an autosave feature. So you have to save any change you want to persist explicitly. Please note that the Audacity project is an OP3 file that can only be opened in Audacity. I will browse to the location where I saved the Audacity file. You will get used to these things once you do it a couple of times. Here is my Audacity project. I can close the current Audacity and reopen the project from the project file. You can see the same recording again. You can play the audio from any position in the timeline. Click on a place in the timeline from where you want to play the audio and press the spacebar. Alternatively, you can use the play button. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software. You may be wondering why the audio sounds too low compared to the current narration. Well, here the post-processing comes into play. In the next part we will see how to navigate around the timeline and waveform. Then we will see how to get the best possible final audio from this recording. In this section of the video we will learn the basic editing and navigation inside Audacity. Basic things like copy-paste are not straightforward in Audacity. You will face a lot of trouble if you do not know the proper system. The Audacity interface may look confusing if you have no prior experience with editing software. However, Audacity has the most straightforward interface of any audio editing software. 
Using it several times will make sense of all the buttons you see. After recording the audio, I have got a track. This whole thing is called a track, and I only have a single track at the moment. The track has two parts, the track information panel at the beginning and the timeline. You can see the project sample rate and bit rate information here. There are some other buttons and sliders, and I will explain these things later. The timeline has my recorded audio as a waveform. The numbers above the waveform are time or seconds. We can understand about the audio at a particular moment from the waveform. For example, the silent parts where I have not talked are almost flat lines. The parts where I have talked have different shapes in the waveform. From waveform shapes, we can understand about its loudness. We will go through these things later. At this moment, let's see how to navigate around and do some basic editing. These basic editing skills are required to make your sound better. If I click anywhere inside the waveform, a black vertical line appears. This black line indicates the current play head position. In other words, if I start playing the audio, it will start playing from the black line. I can click at any place in the timeline, and the black line will move. And I recommend to use Audacity as a... You can see the audio started playing from the black line position. The number above is seconds. If you click on the number, the audio will start playing from that second. Is a pre audio recording. As a early software, I recommend using Audacity. You see some dots visible in the silent parts, which are different kinds of noises. When you see such a dot in the timeline, it is a kind of noise like mouth noise or other little background noise. Deleting such parts makes the audio clean. Deleting something from the timeline is easy. You select a portion by dragging and hit the delete button. You can also delete it from the menu. At the beginning of your Audacity learning, explore the menus a bit. You can see common shortcuts from the menu. Keyboard shortcuts is a faster way to perform common tasks. Next we are going to see the copy function. It is easy, but after Audacity 3.4, it has become a bit tricky. Let's assume you want to make some silent parts bigger. You select a silent part and copy it. To copy, use Command C or Control C if you are using Windows. Alternatively, you can right-click and copy. After copying, go to the part where you want to paste it. Right-click on the place and paste. Copy does not have to be with silent parts only. If you want to copy some talking parts, the process is the same. Select the part and copy. Then, right-click on the place to paste. You can also click on the place and then use the keyboard shortcut Command V or Control V. Practice this process a couple of times, and you will be comfortable with the process. However, copy-paste can be troublesome sometimes. You may see new clips being created on a copy-paste. You have to check your preferences if you see such a thing. For Audacity preference, check tracks behaviors. Notice if you have a check mark beside always paste audio as new clips. I will check it and show you what behavior you will get in copy paste. I will paste a clip here and you will see a new clip being created. You can see two bold black bars appear upon paste. It means a new clip has been created. Clips can be adjusted and dragged separately. For voiceover, the creation of clips may be undesirable because it will alter your editing workflow. Clips are a bit advanced feature of Audacity and you may not need it as a beginner. If you do not want clips, then you have to drag to select all the regions with clips. Then right-click and join clips. You can see the keyboard shortcut also for joining clips. All the clips are now merged into the track. If you face issues in copy-paste and clips, now you know which configuration to alter. If you do not want clip creation on copy, uncheck the always paste audio as new clips. Sometimes you may see copy is not allowed or a message like not enough space. In such cases, check edit a clip can move other clips. If you face issues in copy-paste, these are the settings to look for. These are introduced in newer Audacity, so you need to be aware of these settings. If you want to use Audacity effectively, you have to know such details. My Audacity course for beginners is designed and developed to facilitate such skills. You will be confident and competent using Audacity after doing this course. People have gone far like publishing a complete audiobook on Amazon after completing this course. That is something great for beginners to achieve. This course will help you to achieve your voiceover goal easily, whatever it is. You will find links in the description. Besides these copy-paste commands, there is another interesting command, duplicate. To duplicate, you have to select a track. Double-click inside a track, and everything inside a track will be selected. If I scroll through this track, you will see it is selected. After selecting the track, Go to the edit menu. You will see the duplicate option. Track duplication can be handy if you want to compare between some changes. 
You may enhance a track and compare how it was before enhancement through duplicate. After duplication two tracks are now open in Audacity. You can close out any track by clicking the cross icon. You saw the clip creation on copy paste a bit ago. You can also create a clip without copy paste. To create a clip at any point, right click and split clip. I showed you before that clip can be moved separately. A clip can be trimmed or shortened. If you take your mouse over a clip age, you will notice a trim icon. When the trim icon appears, you can trim it. Trimming does not destroy the audio inside it. It hides the audio. If you expand the clip, the audio inside it will reappear. There is one thing you need to be aware of while creating clips. If you drag a clip or trim, the space between the clips is completely silent. Nothing will be shown in the meter while you play such a part. If you play a silent part in your recording, you will see something in the meter. Because some white background noise is present in the silent parts of the recording. Complete silence may be undesirable in many situations. For example, complete silence is not allowed on audiobook creation. You can make any part completely silent. There is a silence audio selection button. You can undo your last action using Command Z or Control Z. I can undo the silence as it was the last action. Undo or redo works the same way as you are used to with other software. I will end this navigation and basic editing section with history. You can see the history of your actions for the current session. You will find history on the view menu. Please note that the history only contains the actions in the current session. If you close Audacity, the history will be gone. It does not matter if you save the project or not for history. Once you close Audacity, history is wiped out. You can see an arrow pointing to the last action of the audio. I had undone the silence action. The silence action is grayed, and the adjust trim action is my last action. I can go back to any earlier point in history. The audio will be at that point in history. You can say history is a way to go back and forth in your editing stages in the current session. History is not very handy for editing, but sometimes you will forget what changes you have made so far. You can remember from history what you have done so far in the current session. In the next section of the video, we will see the much anticipated feature of Audacity. It is about how to make your sound better in Audacity. Your recording may not always be perfect, but you can make it way better by applying some audio effects. We will see that next. In this section of the tutorial, I will show you a magical way to improve your voice recording using Audacity effects. I am calling this method magic because the sound becomes better just in a click. The core of this magical solution is Audacity effects. Audacity effects can do wonders with your recording. The purpose of effects is not only to improve your audio. It can transform your audio the way you want. So you need to learn how to use Audacity effects to achieve your desired outcome. You can see all the existing audio effects from the effects menu. Audacity effects have two categories. It can be built in Audacity effects, or it can be third party effects you can use with Audacity. All the effects in this part are built in effects that come with Audacity by default. These effects are grouped by the task they do. For example, when you want to manipulate volume, you will use an effect from volume and compression. When you want to use some kind of fade, you will use an effect from fading. I will show you the common effects and their configurations that can improve a voice recording. The other category of effects below are third party effects. Third party effects can be paid or free depending on the publisher of the effect. Sometimes you will find a better third party effect than the built in effect in Audacity. You can integrate those effects into Audacity through a plugin. If you use an older version of Audacity, you may see the effects differently. Audacity actually has a preference setting for how the effects will be shown. Click on effects and you will see two drop downs. The first drop down is for how to show built in effects. For me, it is grouped by category. If your effects menu looks different than mine, you should check this setting. The second drop down is for real time effects. I haven't shown you real time effects yet. I will discuss real time effects later. There are mainly two methods to make your sound better in Audacity. Method one is to apply some effects one by one manually. Here is a list of effects you have to apply for a better voice. Not all the effects are needed on every piece of recording. It depends on what your goal is with the voice recording. The order of the effect also matters. I have listed them alphabetically, but I will eventually show you the proper configuration and sequence. The second method is to apply a macro. A macro is a kind of magical thing. You apply a macro on a recording, and the sound will become better instantly. It sounds too good to be true, but let me show you how that works first. Then I will discuss how to apply these effects manually. The waveform you see on the screen is the raw recording or original recording. I have not added any kind of audio processing to it. I will make a duplicate of this track. After duplicating the track, I will keep one track as it is, and I will improve another track. It would be easier for us to understand how much improvement we got. 
I will improve the second track only. Now both the tracks are selected. I will select only the second track by double clicking inside it. The second track is only selected now, and I will go to the tools menu. From the tools menu, I will select apply macro. Inside apply macro, we can see several macros. Please note that you will not have these macros yet. I will show you where these macros can be found in a moment. For now, let's see the macro magic. I will select the clear vocal improve macro. The clear vocal improve macro will make my voice sound clean and will take it to a proper loudness level at the same time. The waveform at the bottom track has changed. It is much taller than the top waveform. We can understand that the volume level has increased from the waveform height. On some of the silent parts, audio anomalies can be seen now. These are different types of noise, and we can easily select and remove them. That means this macro has already helped to identify problematic places in the silent parts. But what about the magical improvement I talked earlier? Let's listen to the original and improved recording, and we will see the difference. If I now play the audio, both the tracks will be played at the same time. When you have multiple tracks in Audacity, you can make only one track active. Click on the solo button, and that track will be active only. Solo is a toggle button. Pressing it again reverses its action. I will solo the top track and play it for a few seconds. Then I will play the improved track. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software, and I recommend to use Audacity. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software, and I recommend to use Audacity as a early software. I recommend using Audacity as the first software. If you are new to audio editing and recording, I recommend using Audacity. Though Audacity may not be stable as other paid audio editing software, but it is a good software to start with. You may be amazed by hearing the difference the macro has made. It is really that simple to make the voice better using a macro. But where do you get macro like that? Well, you may develop those on your own, or you can get them from me. The macros I am talking about are available on this Buy Me A Coffee page. I have 11 macros to suit different purposes. This EQs and macro pack is one of my best-selling audio products. More than 100 people have already bought it, and it has a very positive rating. You can also become a member to get this and other tools for free. You will get a blog post describing what the 11 macros do. You can use that as a guideline on when to use what macro. The 11 macros solve 11 problems. For example, when you need a clear voice, you will use the clear vocal macro. For sibilance or sharp S reduction, you will use ESS reduction. In the same way, you can use Intelligent Improve, Interview Improve, Podcast Improve, etc. The macro installation process is quite easy. You will get a detailed video on the macro description page. I am showing the process quickly now so that you understand how easy it is. Once you purchase the macro pack, you will get a zip file. The zip file is named macros and eqs.zip. You can download the zip file immediately after purchase, or you can download it anytime later. You will get an email, and the download link will be in the email. Unzip the file, and you will get the macros and eqs folder. Inside that folder, you will see two folders, macros and eqs. The EQs folder also has the EQ separately. I have not discussed about the EQ process, but if you want to use EQ separately in the processing chain, you can do that. However, I am only interested in the macros now. The macros will make the sound better and apply the EQs automatically at the same time. If you check the file inside macros, it is all TXT files. From the name you can understand which macro is that. To install these macros in Audacity, you have to open Audacity. From the tools menu, go to Macro Manager. The macro manager shows what macros you currently have on the left. To install a new macro, you have to import it. Click on the import button. Browse to the macros folder of that zip file. You will see the macro txt file when you select the macros folder. You have to import a macro one by one. Select a txt file and open. You have to repeat this process for the macros you want to install. I already had it installed, so it is asking for overwrite. You will not see this overwrite message for the first time installation. Once it is installed, you will see the macro name in the left side. Repeat this process for the macros you want to install. You can install all the macros or some of the macros. You can remove any installed macros from the Remove button. The macros use some Audacity effects in a particular order and particular configuration. I strongly recommend you get these macros for getting better sound easily. Studying the macros also helps in faster Audacity learning. In the next section, we will see some common effects to make the sound better. The macros use some of these effects in a particular order and particular configuration depending upon their purpose. 
In this section of this video, I will show some basic effects that you must know well. If you do not know the proper configuration of these effects, you will waste your time searching for perfect audio. In my audio consultancy career, I saw many people who applied these effects blindly without understanding what these effects do. You do not need to understand these at a very technical level. But you should be able to tell what each effect does and what change it is going to make on a particular piece of audio. Otherwise, you will waste your time searching for the perfect solution for your audio issues. We will see some of these effects in detail and all of them are covered in my Audacity courses. The first audio effect you should apply is the normalize effect. There are mainly two reasons behind this. Normalize can make the volume level ideal for many platforms and can reveal underlying audio issues in a recording. For example, the audio you see here is a raw recording. Let's play it for a couple of seconds. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software. And I recommend to use Audacity as a uh, early software. I recommend using Audacity. You can see the volume level is quite low. However, the recording level conforms to the ideal recording level. But if we compare the loudness with the current narration, it seems quite low. Normalize effect can help us to solve this low volume issue. I will select everything inside the track by double clicking. You will find normalize under volume and compression. Normalize is a volume controlling effect. Please keep in mind that normalize is used mainly for volume control. We will need this information later. You can see the configuration box for the normalize effect. If you mess up any effect settings in Audacity, you can go back to the default settings easily. From factory presets, select defaults. There are three things to configure for normalize. I will keep the first and third settings to their default value. I will only configure this input box. We can set a value for the peak amplitude in this input box. There is a standard value for the peak amplitude, and I will share that shortly. But what is peak amplitude exactly? Peak amplitude means the loudest point of your selected audio. I had the whole track selected, so the peak amplitude would mean the loudest point of the entire track. The theory may sound complex, let's see what it practically does. The current configuration of peak amplitude is minus 1 dB. I will apply this setting. You can see the waveform has grown vertically after applying normalize. This vertical growth has affected every part of the audio. You may also notice the silent parts are showing something on them. The normalize effect has helped to reveal some anomalies that were not clearly visible before. We can use the visual confirmation to make our audio clean. I will undo this normalize effect as the peak was set as minus 1 dB. The standard value for peak in normalize is minus 3 dB. I applied the default settings to show you what normalize does. Now I will normalize to a proper value that we should use in most cases. You should be aware that the maximum allowed value is zero. Because zero is the maximum in these meters. No positive value is allowed as the peak amplitude. Trying to set a positive value will disable the controls. I will set the peak amplitude to minus 3 dB. If you are totally new to the audio editing, you may not know it yet. Minus 3 dB as the peak is a commonly accepted value. Different platforms may recommend different values for the peak, but minus 3 dB is a safe value for most platforms. I will apply this setting. We can see the waveform grew in height. In other words, the volume level has increased. If we listen to the audio, we can hear it at a much louder volume. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software, and I recommend to use Audacity as a uh, early software. I recommend using Audacity. You may think that the normalize effect increases the volume of the recording. Well, that is not the case. Normalize can also decrease the loudness. You must understand when normalize can increase volume or decrease volume. I have another recording sample on the screen. The peak of this waveform is clearly distinguishable from others. I will play these parts separately and notice where they hit the meter. I will not output the audio, so pay close attention to the meter during playback. This part is hitting around minus 15 dB in the meter. The abrupt high peak is hitting zero in the meter. In other words, the peak is at the highest it can be. Before applying the normalize effect, think about what will happen if I normalize to minus 3 dB. The peak is currently at zero dB as we saw just a bit ago. If I normalize to minus 3 dB, then it would mean a 3 dB decrease for the peak. Pay attention to this. The peak will decrease by 3 dB, so the volume will decrease in this case. This 3 dB decrease will happen everywhere in the audio. In other words, with normalize, the peak and other audio get the same amount of increase or decrease. If the peak is increased after normalize, every part of the audio increases by the same amount. If the peak decreases, the same thing happens with the other parts of the audio. 
I will apply a minus 3 dB normalize to this audio. Previously you saw an increase in the volume level. For this audio, you will see a decrease. You can see the waveform shrank. If you check the peak, it will hit minus 3 dB as I set in the normalize settings. Understanding this fundamental concept will take you a long way in audio editing. If I play this part, it was around minus 15 before normalize. As this audio got a 3 dB decrease, it is now hitting around minus 18. To solidify our understanding, I will do another thought exercise. The current peak is minus 3 dB. If I normalize again to minus 1 dB, what will happen? You should pause the video and think about it. If you feel confident, please write a comment where the audio will be louder or quieter after minus 1 dB normalize. I will apply the minus 1 dB normalize. The waveform grew this time. If I play the peak, it will hit minus 1 dB in the meter. Before the second normalize, the peak was minus 3 dB. After normalize the peak is minus 1 dB. That means a 2 dB increase in the overall audio. Understanding how the normalize effect works is crucial to achieving your goal in audio editing. You should try with different values in your recording and check how your audio is affected. The key takeaway is you should normalize your raw recording to minus 3 dB. The volume may increase or decrease depending on the peak you had before normalize. If it increases, then okay. If it decreases, then you have to take some special measures. We will see eventually if the volume decreases after the first normalize. For me, the volume level increased in this recording. It also revealed some noises after normalize. I can see some noisy bits better and can delete those to clean up the audio. These noises are mouth noise or breathing noise or unintended noise made during recording. To remove some constant noise, Audacity has an effect called noise reduction. We will see the details of noise reduction in the next section of the video. Noise reduction is one of the most sought after effects in Audacity. People often mistakenly believe that reducing noise will make their audio perfect. Many people start using Audacity to reduce noise in their audio. Imagine, you just get started with audio recording and find a free way to remove noise. Of course, you would like it and think it will solve your disturbing noise issue from the audio. Well, the noise reduction effect can do that but to a limited extent. Audacity's noise reduction will not remove all the noise. You have to understand which noise it can reduce and how to reduce that noise. Otherwise, you will waste a lot of time trying to reduce noise, which may not be possible. I am back with the original recording on the screen. The noise level in the original recording is lower than it would be in a processed final audio. Let me show you what I mean by that. I will play some non-talking parts from the beginning. Please keep an eye on the meter as I play this. It hit around minus 36 in the meter. However, that is not the true level of the noise I have. The dots you see on these parts are some mouth noise. I will remove those dots to get only the constant hissing or background noise. Noise reduction works only with constant background noise. Sudden noises from the mouth or other sources are not removable using the noise reduction effect. I now have only constant noise at the beginning. As I am playing the audio, it is hitting somewhere between minus 48 and minus 45. So we can say that the constant hissing noise is at at this level for the original audio. The volume level on the original recording is not ideal for the final audio. We can normalize to fix the audio level. We have already seen how to use the normalize effect. Let's assume I am using these settings for normalize. If the waveform becomes taller, it would mean the volume level has increased. The waveform grew, so the volume level is now louder than in the original recording. However, the beginning parts are not as flat as before. An increase in the volume level has also contributed to an increase in noise level. We can confirm that by playing that part. The noise level is now here which was at this position before normalize. The main takeaway is that if you increase the loudness of your recording, the noise level will also increase. It is an important concept to remember and I think you understood the point. Let's now see the actual noise reduction process. To remove hissing noise, you have to select a noise-only part from anywhere in the recording. It can be from the start, middle, or end. I have already selected some parts at the beginning, and I will use them. The main point is your selected hissing noise is the kind of noise you are trying to remove from your audio. I will provide the selected part as a noise sample to Audacity. Audacity will then remove similar noise. Noise reduction is a two-step process. The first part involves introducing the noise to Audacity. With the noise sample selected, go to the noise reduction effect. You can see two steps in the configuration window. You can read the description to know about what a step does. Click on the Get Noise Profile button. In step 2, 
Audacity will use this noise profile which we will see shortly. Step 1 is done for noise reduction. For step 2, select the portion of the audio from where you want to remove that noise. For me, that white noise is present all over the audio, so I will select everything on the track by double-clicking inside it. There is another way to select everything inside the track. Click on the Select button on the Track Information panel. You can see everything inside the track is selected. There is more than one way to perform a particular task in Audacity. After selecting the entire track, go to the Noise Reduction effect again. We will now perform Step 2, or the final step for noise reduction. You have to set values for these sliders. Remember, there is a cost with noise reduction. The more noise you reduce, the harsher the sound becomes. In the first slide, you will set the noise reduction amount. When a matching noise is found, Audacity will reduce that noise by the amount you set here. You may be tempted to set a higher value here thinking reducing more noise is better. Actually, it is the opposite. The more noise you reduce, the quality of the audio will degrade. The best setting is a value of 6 on all the three sliders. Practically, you may need to use a value like 9 or 12 as the noise reduction amount. You should never use a value more than 12 as the noise reduction amount. I will set it as 12, but remember a value of 6 or 9 is preferable as the noise reduction amount. The next slider is sensitivity. The default value of 6 works okay. However, you need to know a bit about what it does. Sensitivity decides how aggressive the noise reduction process will be. If it is set to 0, no noise reduction will happen regardless of what value you set in other sliders. The maximum value is 24, but you can hardly go over 6. Because a too aggressive noise reduction will destroy the audio quality, set the sensitivity value to 6. The third slider is about the frequency smoothing. After noise reduction, a gap is introduced in the audio data. Frequency smoothing bands reduce that gap. It helps to reduce the harshness introduced due to noise reduction. Zero means no smoothing will be applied. For music recording, a lower value, like 2 or 1 is recommended. For voice recording, 6 is recommended as frequency smoothing. I have all three sliders set now for noise reduction. Please make sure the reduce radio button is selected. If you want to know more about Audacity noise reduction, you can click the help icon. It will take you to documentation. To apply these settings, click on OK. The noise reduction is applied, and the line already looks flat. If I play this, the noise is quite reduced. It is hitting somewhere between minus 45 and minus 48 in this meter. The purpose of noise reduction is not to reduce noise only from non-speaking parts. The main purpose of noise reduction is to reduce noise from the speaking parts. You should always check how the speaking parts sound after noise reduction. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software. And I recommend to use Audacity as a uh, early software. I recommend using Audacity. It sounds okay. If your goal is to reduce noise from silent parts only, you should use the noise gate effect. I am skipping the details of noise gate in this video. However, if you want to reduce noise for professional work, you should use third-party software. Because some software or third-party plugins can reduce noise without introducing as much harshness as Audacity does. If you are into such high-quality audio, please check my Audacity course for beginners. I discussed what you should do as a beginner and where to look for professional audio after that. You will get bonuses like a free check of your recording quality and improvement quality if you participate in the course. I recommend you take the membership as it offers more tools and services as you embark on your audio editing journey. I will put links in the description and feel free to check those. We will now move to another audio effect that you should have some idea as a beginner.